Tally, the red light is on. <laughs> we are going. Oh, My friend, how are you doing? Um, you know, I am actually doing pretty well. I am feeling very happy, and that's what's most important about Fight Week. You gotta gotta be positive and just enjoy the process. Absolutely. Tally Payne Fight Week. Uh, just got a win, what, two, three months ago? Got that first one underneath the belt. One professional win. Now we're one and one. We're rolling to two and one very, very soon. Um, how is it to kind of I, we, we talked about a little bit off air and all that stuff. How much better do you feel to get that one off your uh, off the shoulder? You got that one professional win. Now it's like, yeah, we're going to get shit rolling. We're going to get some wins in a row now. How does that uh, feel training day in, day out? Um, it's actually really exciting. You know, it's I, I'm happy to get the loss out of the way, get that yeah. one loss out of the way. Um, and now it's just up and at him. You know, we just keep going up with it. And um, I'm having a blast. It's just super motivating. I it was good to get that first win, but it's not enough. I'm ready to kind of keep showing people I deserve all these next couple of wins. I've just been working my butt off. So I'm ready for that next one. Just keep that up. <laughs> for sure. I was, um, I think that was the weekend you and uh, Carson came out there. It was Icon. And I was talking to K-Rock and she was saying something about like how Amanda Nunes lost like her first fight ever as a pro and unquestionably the greatest female fighter of all time. Pretty soon I hope we can take that female out. One of the greatest fighters of all time. And it's like, she's, it's crazy how people forget about the early losses and when you kind of get to those bigger shows and the big stuff. That's when, uh, you know, those wins and losses matter a lot. Um, you know, you talked about train just there. Has, have you changed anything? Have you changed anything up? Have you kind of tweaked anything or you just kind of back on it? Um, you know, as soon as I got back out here, each game plan has been somewhat similar um, and just grinding away. You know, I, I'm so grateful again, every time to be able to come and do my camps out here at Jackson Wink. Right. Um, happy this time around, actually COVID did not affect things. You know, the last Good. or Invicta, uh, the gyms were shut down. I didn't have a sauna to go to this and that. So that just made things really weird. And it's just been nice doing a camp that feels normal again and not having to worry about the COVID and the masks and all this kind of stuff. So um, switch things up, of course, you know, each camp just gets better and better and uh, started working with a new strength and conditioning coach, which just added a whole nother aspect to my game. And that I think was probably the best thing I could have added to this camp um, and still just really working one-on-one -on -one with coach Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn. It has been amazing. You know, I'm blessed to get the, to be able to work with both of them, you know, in the last couple camps, it's been hard, especially when uh, the UFC fighters or Bellators have uh, fighters have fights coming up, you know, that's where the focus goes. But this camp, I've been able to get a lot of focus from them. And so that means a lot to me for sure. Very cool. That's actually a really good point. You really don't hear that a lot about like how with you're on a great team with great coaches and a lot of people would might say, Hey, Tally, maybe go to a smaller gym to get a lot more one-on-one, -on -one, but you're trained at one of the best gyms in the world. One of the great minds in the world. And it's almost like you almost had to pay your dues. It's like, let me get in, let me get a couple camps in. And now they saw me win professionally. They see I'm, you know, serious about it. They see I'm long-term. They see I'm going to be a future UFC champion. So they're like, let's, let's go with you. So like, that's kind of a good point. It's a different point to be able to literally work with two of the greatest minds in all of MMA. Absolutely. And, you know, that's something I actually was just having this conversation with someone about Jackson Wink. Um, Jackson Wink is different. And right. so many people come and it's either sink or swim out here. And you have to, weirdly, you have to be prepared to do a lot of this on your own. And that's why a lot of people just can't hang. They're used to these smaller gyms and being able to have that coach's attention one-on-one -on -one and um, in these smaller, you know, smaller gyms. Uh, in this big gym, we understand I am low on the totem pole. I'm working my way up and each camp I keep showing up and I am here ready to rumble. And so they're seeing that. And that's what just kind of, like you said, I've earned my way to get the, to be able to work with these coaches and some people just walk in and they expect to be able to do a private with coach week, coach week, coach Greg right off the streets. And they don't understand that, you know what, you do have to prove yourself here. You have to work hard. You have to show them that you're dedicated. These people have 20 plus years individually of coaching. 
And that is a lot to trust to pass on to other fighters or other people. So uh, it takes a lot, even for them, you know, like I said, you have everybody coming off the street saying, hey, I'm going to be your next fighter. I'm going to be your next star. Sure. Um, it takes a lot for them to really weed out all of those people and find the ones that are serious about it. And I think I've been able to prove that not only with sparring with um, the top girls here, Holly Holm and Michelle Watterson, but also because I keep showing up and I'm putting in the work and I show them I'm a fighter. You know, I it was crazy making this post today. This is my seventh camp out here in three years. And that is crazy to think like, damn, you know, I'm so lucky that I've been able to have the fights I have, especially during COVID. Right. You have gotten seven fights under the Jackson Wink banner um, in a span of years. That's amazing. And it was like really motivating. Like, yeah, this is, and this is just the beginning, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So one thing I definitely want to dive into, and you know how much I love and adore fighters and just everything you guys have to go through on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, especially kind of the fight day, fight week, all that stuff. So you guys, you're fighting on a Thursday night, weight, weight cuts on a Wednesday. That's like so um, abnormal, right? Like it's usually 90% of shows are on the weekend, especially Saturday night and you have your full week to get in Monday. It's like fight week. And then Friday's the cut and all that nature. How different is it for you? Uh, has it kind of, I know you're only the beginning of fight week, but you're two days away from cutting and all that stuff. So like how, how much, you know, in the back did you have to think, okay, guys, three weeks from now I am fighting. So did you have to change stuff up and really kind of put the calendar and really lock some stuff in? Yeah, you do. Because most of the time, like I said, you said fighters they're like okay i get to weigh in on thursday so that's almost a whole work week you right know? right you have days to prepare for that right now especially because you have to take time out for travel so i'm traveling all day tomorrow so that kind of takes out a day of my way you flying or driving i'm flying yeah i didn't want to make the drive it's too much easy quick flight i'll get yeah. there, checked in and then finish the weight cut you know so uh, there's a lot that goes into it. You, everything you plan is different, you know, yep. with the water loading, um, with that water cut, everything is different. Um, I am lucky though. Cause I feel like I fought, I have fought on a Thursday before. Um, I think it was on an amateur card. So I weighed in on the Thursday. Um, but you know, I was going to fight on a Sunday one day. So for one of the camps that didn't end up going through, but I'm used to it. This is part of the game and the honestly, fight game. a lot. So give me a day and I'll be ready for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Tally Biden, Thursday night, uh, ready to improve the record to two and one professionally. All right. So one thing I definitely want to touch on is because how much I know commentating with you on Island fights, uh, even on that icon, kind of doing some interviews and stuff outside of it. You're phenomenal on the mic. You're phenomenal with different stuff outside of the cage. Um, how much does that really interest you and how much you're like, yeah, Dave, like I, I wouldn't mind three years from now, five years from now doing it fully or even doing it. A lot of the fighters now it's wild where the UFC they're on the desk. They're on the, like you see Bilal Muhammad doing it a lot now and he still wants to be a top five welterweight in the world, but he's on the mic all the time, you know, making money, making standard money. How much does that really interest you? Oh, so much. You know, I love seeing these fighters, whether they're still fighting or retired, involved in the game because i think it just makes it so much more authentic when you're hearing actual fighters commentate on stuff or you know it'd be nice if maybe they were judging too that would help a lot. but definitely in the commentating aspect it's i think people just respect it a whole lot more and it's so cool to hear the stories or their experiences and just getting in the mind of a fighter in a different way besides just interviews you know commentating maybe the questions they come up with so that is something i'm realistic about the sport i know i can't fight forever and this is something i've done half my life now and i love it so much so anything i can do to be involved even matchmaking anything like that you know um that's why i love invicta because they have all the women doing all this stuff you know it's like if i could be a promoter or a matchmaker you know anything that i could do that has to do with the fighting i would love still being involved because like i said this is i don't want to say it's all i know but it's what i know and it's what i'm good at so if i could right. still 
called after and helping these, you know, this next generation come through, even the generation after me come through, especially the women. Um, I'd love to be a part of it in any aspect. So yeah, you know, even ring card girl, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> like, well, like on the mic, like when we call fights together, like you can, you have so much passion for it and it, it jumps through the microphone. So you know oh, what you're talking about. Sometimes I, I get a little excited. I, I've apologized before, but it's because I love it. And this right. is something I could talk about it all day and I love it. I just love it so much. So I can't help it. <laughs> right. That's awesome. Um, okay. So you mentioned Invecta there a couple of times and you fought for them once didn't go your way now did they tell you to hey tally get a couple other wins and then come back or is it like hey i need to fight i'm i'm gonna find kind of different organizations to link up get two three wins here and then come back to them how did that work you know after that loss so when i got into invicta i actually didn't have any management and so i was lucky that i was able to do that without management but after right. that loss i had a conversation with my husband and family i was like you know what i really I want some help and I just want some guidance with this next move. This next move is going to be very important. And we're lucky with Invicta because it's an open contract, you know, and there are a lot of, there's so many women signed with Invicta that are waiting for Invicta and that is perfectly okay. But I'm 30 years old, you know, and I am on a timeline and I'm like, you know what? I obviously want to fight for Invicta again. I'm hoping maybe after this, they'll give me another call. Um, right. But I, I don't have time to wait. I don't have time to wait. And I'm lucky that I have my management um, encouraging me as well, saying, hey, it's OK. You know, Invicta is not going to be your only route to the big shows. You right. know, all I have to do is fight and show these people that what a talented fighter I am. You know, get these wins under my belt, whatever show it may be. Um, and I, so, you know, honestly, I kind of like I I love these. Uh, I don't want to say smaller shows, but. Any of these shows are a platform for me. Hundred percent, I I love it. I and this is kind of they're more regional based shows. I, mean, regional see, I love them. Like there's something old school and gritty and something like wholesome about it. I you know me, I love them. I love going to island fights and I there's just there's I love these smaller shows and it's I feel like they <laughs> they take care of you more. There's more one on one. It's just really good communication. Um, Oh, no, I was thinking that you said there, too, that it really hit home. And I know um, I, we had to bring in Carson sometime. I talked for 12 minutes and didn't bring her in. Like, injuries happen, and it, they suck. So when you said, Sue, and you're super healthy right now, it's like, hey, I can't wait for Invicta. Let me get three wins here in six months. If you're healthy, roll through people. Like, you know, I think it's a smart move. It's uh, As a fighter, I, to me, the thing that would probably – get at me the most is the weight game and be like, Hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to get you something in the spring, but like spring, we got all fall. We got winter to go to, you know? So I don't know if you feel that way. <laughs> yeah. that And that's kind of where it was. And honestly, now you have this aspect of COVID and yeah. uh, New Mexico just implemented masks again. And so I kind of was freaked out. Like, you know, now who knows what could happen if things are going to shut down again. Um, I'm so happy that this is uh, XFC in Texas. So, you know, Texas doing their own thing um, and they're on the show. But I have a friend who I think she was going to fight in Iowa or something. And they canceled the show, the whole show, the week of. And this we get an audience, which I'm so excited about. So I was like, right. look, I need to take this opportunity before the whole world shuts down again. We, we have no idea. And that's that's what's really kind of rough about this fight game is every single day changes and you have no idea what could happen whether it's injuries now covid you yeah. just know and so that's the whole aspect of you got to be ready and you have to take these opportunities and i've been get it, given these opportunities and it's like why not you know why not it's a great show it's a great promotion um we're the only girls on the fight card which i always love being the only <laughs> girl on the fight card because we put on the best show you know we always get fight of the night so i love it and so it's again an opportunity why not take it absolutely guys we're talking with tally Payne. make sure you give her a follow on instagram real easy tally.pain right there uh we have five fun yeah, I have five fun questions for you in a second. But before I ask you those, um, 
the Ultimate Fighter just ended. My good friend Brian Battle was on it. He's in the co-main event this weekend's UFC. Also, probably my favorite two hours in all of MMA uh, contender series. Dana White's contender series is coming back in a few weeks. Someone who we saw, AJ Fletcher, out there for Ike. He's fighting on it on the 31st. Um, if one of those, if you had to... If you had to do a uh, highway and there's a veer there, which angle would you take? Would you love, hey, I would want to fight one fight contender series in Vegas in the Apex, or would you want maybe the experience of doing the Ultimate Fighter? Does any of those interest you? Oh, yeah. I've actually uh, been talking about that, too. Um, that was kind of the goal was like, you know, I knew maybe in the new year um, that the contender series was coming around, and I would love to do that. I think I put on a show. Sometimes all I need is one, uh, one performance. And I feel like I would do a really good job. So I was like, you know what, let me rack up some wins this year and right. then create that opportunity for myself to do the contender series. And I would do a show in a heartbeat. I remember it was actually, it was, it must've been about four years now, um, ago that they had, um, for flyweights. I think they had, it may have been straw weights, but I think they had one for the flyweight girls. And I remember I had, um, a friend of mine that I was actually trying out for it and I wanted to so bad, but I think you had to have like at least three professional fights. And I was still right. at that level, but I was like, Oh my gosh, even at that, I was like, let me just, let me just try, let me just try it out. So yeah, anything that has to do with this, um, is an opportunity for me and I will take it and run with it, you know? So yeah. in on a show, I, I have that experience too. And, um, contender series, anything like that, that just gets those eyes on me. Sometimes I think that's all it takes is getting those eyes on you and, uh, yep. having that platform, you know, that I said to be able to perform and I'm a performer and whatever platform you give me, I'm definitely going to perform on. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's funny you said that, uh, talk to Jillian Savage off air about it, how she got in the ultimate fighter show and she felt she was too young and probably not ready, but she said the same thing. She just needed that, you know, chance and that opportunity. And she was clawing and she was calling every little regional show in Florida to get that third professional fight. She didn't care who was against. Um, and she got it kind of, I think she said she fought it like on Friday, uh, flew out on Saturday and Sunday were, you know, they were taking people in. So it was just wild um, weekend for Jillian. But okay, five fun questions. You ready? With our dear friend, Tally Payne, who's Friday this Thursday. Who is your favorite all-time mixed martial artist? Um, honestly, I absolutely, absolutely love Bullet Valentina. I have followed her for a while, even before she got in the UFC. And I just think she is exactly what you want to be as a mixed martial artist. Beautiful. Um, after you win, what's your go-to meal? Chicken and waffles. Every single time, chicken and waffles. <laughs> there you go. Uh, right now on your iPhone, what is your go-to song? Um, you know, I've actually been pretty hyped by... Um, Church by T Pain. Okay. It's a song. I came across it. It is my hype song right now. I play it almost before every sparring session. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Um, if you're not watching MMA, what are you watching? Um, crime. Anything that has to do with uh blood, guts, gore, violence. Love it. Okay, okay. I'm I'm stopping the question. There's one more and we'll go to it. <laughs> I, every time I go home midday, I get lunch or I'm out of the studio for a second, I go home. And, and my wife, when she watches something, like the volume when I'm home, it's at 12. That's that's like the set volume for the family, you know? When I get home, she's watching it on volume 25, and it's always crime. It's always about like serial killers or like some kind of family killing. I'm like, Donna, what are you watching? She can't get enough of it every single day. Every day. Us women, I'm telling you, we're all crazy. We all love, we'll fall asleep listening to those yes. documentaries. It's the yes. weirdest thing. <laughs> I go to sleep watching The Office or like, you know, Parks and Rec, and she goes to sleep watching true crime. It's a true story. <laughs> Gosh, last question, fun question. If someone tomorrow gave you, two days before the fight, gave you $10 million, one, would you still be a fighter? And would you still fight this Thursday? Absolutely. Absolutely. That was the correct answer. <laughs> Very cool. Tally Payne, uh, my dear friend. Um, so excited for you. Two and one after this week. And uh, hopefully, maybe see you really, really soon, maybe in a couple weeks. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping too. You know, I would love to watch some bare knuckle boxing live. That is my next goal is to watch some badass, especially the women. I think that, you know. Two uh, female fights on it. 
I saw that. It's going to be some really good. And I know you've had um, ISIS. From, I think that's how you pronounce Yes, it. yes. You fought an icon. And she's back on this show. And that's amazing. And she's going against an OG, you know. So I yeah. get to watch both of those girl fights and see if it motivates me a little bit. It's still scary, but I would love to watch it live. I think bare knuckle anything live is amazing. And I really it want is. to. It is. And maybe Fight Bananas needs like another correspondent again. Who knows? You never know. Dude. You never know. <laughs> Tally, we appreciate you. Um, you look great. Hopefully you feel good mentally, physically. And GovW, we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely, David. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. You are the absolute best. One of the best <laughs> podcasts out there and just killing it as always. So thank you so much for having me on. Thanks, Tally. Appreciate